Good morning, everybody. This is Grant with a live Monday motivation episode of the Spark Show for you guys today. We're going to be covering my theme this year, which I'm super pumped about. What is the micro moon? Weird new water. Yes, new water. No, we're not talking about Fiji water. We're not talking about soda water. There are new elements to water that we're discovering. But most importantly, how do you beat every bad argument? And how do you actually beat these bad arguments in a way that's constructive to your goals? We're going to be covering that and more in today's episode of the Spark Show. But before any of that, you know we've got a little bit of other news to educate you. And before any of that, we're going to talk briefly about the markets to inoculate you against the insane chaos that they want you to feel. We're going to help you overcome that just briefly by just sharing the markets. But more than anything... We're going to start our day with a morning cup of gratitude. You got to start your day with gratitude. You got to shift your headspace because there is so much in this world that wants you to feel eh and angsty and get wound up. And we are constantly fighting the entropy of the mind. And how do you do that? You pop that bubble simply by starting with gratitude, taking a pause from all of that and expressing what you're grateful for. I want to hear what you're grateful for in the comments below, and you know I'm going to share mine first. I am super grateful for my fitness journey, but more than my fitness journey, I'm super grateful for the time I get to spend in the gym getting my head straight. I cannot tell if it's more important for my brand, my platform, or my mental health for me to be at the gym like I have been. It helps so much to actually have an outlet, not an outlet for aggression, an outlet where I am inside my mind making massive progress on my goals. That's what I'm grateful for. Do you have a fitness discipline? Do you have a fitness habit? If you don't, I just encourage you, start one, walk around the block. Zig Ziglar said, well, walk to the mailbox and back, then walk to the end of the street and back, then walk around the block and back. Start something and that will give you something to be proud of yourself for, to see progress in your own life when the rest of the world is calling for recession and everything is the worst it's ever been throughout all of history, which is not true. But, the, but if that's in your head, if you have a fitness discipline of some kind, it changes your entire outlook of the day, especially if you start the day. So that is what I'm grateful for. What are you grateful for? Tell me in the comments. Let me know where you are most grateful today. And let's talk about other news. Mm -hmm. News that makes you feel elevated, that gives you something better to think about, starting with weird water. Now, listen, if you have not already read the book, uh, The Hidden Messages of Water, you have missed out on an absolute gem. The Hidden Messages of Water, I read it almost 20 years ago, and it was based on several Japanese researchers who did massive research, huge longitudinal studies about the properties of water. Now, if you don't know this, water is already super weird. Water is already one of the most mystifying uh, substances that we know of in our known universe, and it's getting weirder. Number one, water is a universal solvent. Nearly everything dissolves in water. Nearly everything, given enough time, either oxidizes or melts within water, including water, even, even lava, which technically has liquid base, right? It's molten. Yes, it's extremely hot. Yes, but given enough water, it actually dissolves. The surface tension of water is unusually high compared to other, uh, other liquid substances. Its boiling point is also unusually high. And here's the one that absolutely boggles my mind. My mind is completely boggled on water from this regard. It becomes less dense the colder it is. The more solid water is, it is less dense. Hence, ice floating in water. You don't pause to think about this because you drink ice water nearly all the time. But when you have ice floating in water, you need to take a time out and think, this is weird. Because if you actually had some other liquid, some non-water uh, or a, a liquid that wasn't dominantly water, and it solidified, it would sink and fall. It would become more dense. This is the one element of water that has cooked my gourd forever. Now, did you know? that we have snowflakes and crystals because its molecules agitate until it freezes, and then it finds it's these crystalline structures within our biosphere alone. If you took water into the vacuum of space and froze it, it doesn't actually form ice crystals. It just forms a solid. It doesn't have the ability to create the energetic exchange to create ice crystals. Now, this is where it gets freaky. Water also 
responds to intentionality and messaging. You ever done the experiments where you speak nice things over water and then mean things over water? It happens. So water is absolutely weird and there's some new research that's making it seem weirder. Now, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you at seven in the morning, you got places to be and I got places to be. And I didn't even totally understand. But one thing I did get from this is that there is over 22 different forms of water. We think of ice, steam, and a liquid, that's it. There's over 22 different forms of water and they have found two more. For the sake of time, I'm gonna drop this link to you in the comments, boom, and you can read that yourself and see all the different forms of water. But just, I, I share this with you to share a piece of awe. When you're out at breakfast or lunch or dinner this evening, look at your ice water and ponder, well, isn't that weird? It defies what our known laws of physics are. So there you go. Let's talk about the markets very briefly. Right now, the Dow is at 33,700. The last time I reported, it was at 33,400. Uh, the S&P is at 4,100. The last time I reported, is at 3,900. Not much growth there. Steady growth, small growth, but not a ton of growth. The NASDAQ is at 12,400. Now, this has bumped a little bit. Last time I reported, it was at 11,600. So the NASDAQ has popped a little bit more. So since I've been reporting this over the last multiple weeks, but I've got the last five weeks in front of me, we're not up more than 2 or 3% in all of those. So as you're reading the headlines, the sky is falling, the job numbers are good. We know there's up markets. We know there's down markets. But are those ups and downs as dramatic across the market as one would think? Well, not so far. We haven't had the fallout. Robert Kiyosaki said this is the worst recession it's ever going to be. Ray Dalio, who I have a lot of respect for, says the same thing. I personally have not yet seen the bottom fall out as you would expect it to do. Let's talk about DeFi. In DeFi, Bitcoin is down only 1.6% over last week at 22,700 or 22,800. The last time I reported, it was at 22,857, virtually flat. Now, the week before that, it was at 17,000 with a very strong pop. Be careful. This could be what's considered a bull trap. Go look that up at Investopedia yourself. Ethereum's up at 2.63% at 1,600. Last time I reported, it's at 1,635. Nearly flat. Uh, the week before that, it was at 1,300. So it did pop a little bit as well. Cardano ADA is it up 2.74% over the last week. Uh, it put, put, puts it at about 39 cents. The last time I reported it was at 35 cents, uh, 37 cents. And XRP is down 0.86%, nearly flat at 39 cents, uh, at 0.3964 cents. And the last time I reported it, it was at 42 cents. It's down a little bit. These markets are up, they're down. These moves are not nearly as big as the DeFi moves were a few weeks ago where it was popping 10, 12%. Our portfolio is up really high. Could be a bull trap, I don't know. It could be artificially propped up, don't know. But my point is this, I share the markets with you this morning to inoculate, like, don't worry. I'm not gonna put a headline out here that the sky is falling, they might. But as long as you're doing smart trading, again, not financial advice, but I try to do smart trading on this end over the long term with dollar cost averaging, it's the smartest, least stressful way I know that I don't have to watch the markets day in and day out. I know that I'm always lowering my dollar cost average and pulling more profits over the long term. And the rest of my investments and the rest of my efforts are then put in building my own business and real estate, stuff that I can affect. And that's what we're talking about today, my theme this year, and beating every bad argument. How do you set it and forget most of your life so that your energies are put towards actually making real progress on things you can act on? We'll talk about that in a second. We're gonna skip talking about the full snow mood. A quick highlight on this for today's news. I'm just gonna give you a quick highlight. We're not gonna go deep into the, the micro moon for the sake of time. It's what's called the full snow moon and it's called a micro moon and it is the inverse opposite of a super moon. The micro moon is when the, uh, the moon is at its furthest distance from the earth. It's the opposite of a super moon. It's about 14% smaller visually than a super moon. But Jupiter will also be out there for you to see. And it did peak, the full moon was last night. And so you might still see it bright this morning as you wake up in the United States and it will dwindle from here. But just so you know and edify you, that was the full snow moon, February 5th. And then last but not least, a few quick business updates. No new updates on the Spark bookkeeping front. Adam has got that on lockdown, making huge progress of his own. 
Wonderland Investments, we have to import, uh, report to our uh, share. We have 12 investors, give or take. We'll up update them, but we've just been dollar cost averaging there. No new updates. Spark Sites, we did finish our chat GPT course, so watch for us to drop that this week. We're going to launch that on Gumroad. You should get it. It's going to be very affordable as we open it, but we're going to run with some pricing experiments where the price will go up every day for about 30 days until it lands on its actual market price. And Facebook user, for some reason, your name is not coming in. I don't know who you are, but the moon is looking nice this morning. Take a minute, folks. And like whoever my lovely friend is, and I'm sure we know each other, it's taking time to take a breath and, and uh, orient oneself that it's not about the headlines. It's not about the drama. It's not about the chaos. It's about you and your goals and your place on this planet, this planet in the solar system and us walking out the best life we can with the time we're given. That's why we talk about the moon to orient ourselves. And last but not least, my real estate investments. We've been trying to get our financing ready because if the bottom is falling out of the market and the pricing is getting better in real estate, we want as much capital put to the side as possible for us to make our move on our next few, uh, next purchases. Our next one or two purchases, our next one or two doors is very critical to our real estate plans because it's where we wanna be physically, but also where we wanna be revenue generating wise. So we're waiting, uh, our HELOC has been hung up on our insurance. Uh, basically in the state of Florida, a lot of insurance companies pulled out. Just before our HELOC was finished, our insurance company uh, stopped it policy with us and our insurance company then had to go find a new policy, a new underwriter. And we've been in that process for a few weeks. I just give you that insight because people often talk about, hey, I'm a millionaire or hey, here's my fitness. And I just woke up this way. I just woke up fit. I just woke up with all of this real estate and I just woke up with all these businesses and they very rarely communicate the work and the week in and week out effort. And it's not sexy, but it's real. And I hopefully, and being real, it's helpful. Let's talk about how to beat every bad argument and how that correlates to my theme this year. Victimhood is everywhere I look, to the left of me, to the right of me. Some of it is very legit. A lot of people have been victimized. Some of it is just complaining. A lot of people take the position of the victim because eh, life's not fair and it's very boring in a country that has a lot of resources. And so we often complain about smaller things, nuanced things, and we lose perspective. We lose the bigger picture. Victimhood is nearly everywhere I look. And victimhood, I find, is also creeping in to me. If you see someone hurting or complaining about someone else's actions, so-and-so did this, the governor did this, the president did this, my cousin did this, my neighbor did this, my spouse did that. If you actually dive into their reasoning of why they're complaining, they're expressing some form of victimization. They feel victimized, they feel uh, minimized somehow. But instead of making progress on the desired outcome they have, They've exerted a ton of energy in the complaining, which they usually do, and they're dragged down often to the lowest form of the argument. Uh, very re uh, real this last week. Over the last week, I've seen several instances of this coming to light. Number one, I saw a, a ridiculous, not a ridiculous, I saw a poorly formed argument around whether or not there's actually a book ban in Florida. I'm not going to get into the politics of that. I did that online, and I shouldn't have. It wasn't about the topic or the positions of that. I was put off that they were delivering the poorest form of the argument. If you've seen the show Newsroom, uh, I, or if you haven't, I highly recommend you see the show. And they're on a mission to civilize dialogue in the country with their show. And one of the number one rules that they bring onto the whiteboard is this. Please make the best form of the argument. If you make the best form of the argument, you stand a chance that all the energies congregate around actions that make an impact. But if you make the lowest form of the argument, everyone's attention is on that low form of the argument. A, you make yourself look silly because you made a weak argument. B, your argument itself being a weak argument was easily overcome. C, the energies were directed there. D, you were therefore discredited. And if you have a good point, as I assume you do, you shouldn't be discredited so easily. So take the time to make a well-formed Argument. I also saw this with fruitless complaints about whether or not ChatGPT would destroy a particular service industry. Now, you guys know I'm very pro AI or ChatGPT in this instance, but more than that, I'm very pro at being uh, resilient 
mentally and not looking at what's going on in the market as a sign that you're going to fail. It's just yet another thing that you could have expected that was going to affect your market and you should have taken action on. Another one was an unnecessary debate on the merits and future of crypto. I actually saw Paul Krugman. Uh, Paul Krugman famously said the internet would only have the impact on business that the fax machine would, and he was proven wrong. He is what is known as a critical cynic in the technology space and has for some time. I saw him on the masterclass for cryptocurrency. I finished that masterclass this weekend. It was a very good masterclass, but I thought the fact that they had Paul Krugman there as the cynic debating against cryptocurrency was a very weak form of the argument. And as I got sucked into this, I went to Twitter and there were some Twitter conversations about the future and merits of Web3, crypto, and blockchain. Listen, I'm convinced. I don't have to convince anyone else. But I was so put off about the weakness of the arguments. I could take the anti-crypto argument or the anti-Florida uh, governor uh, DeSantis argument or the anti uh, chat GPT argument and make far better arguments than the people currently arguing against it. I personally am for some of these things, not all. But what really bothers me is whether or not there's a good argument or a bad argument being made. Basically, it's lazy thinking. And lazy thinking is what often gets us here in the first place. Now, as I surveyed not only the positions of these arguments, I also surveyed the lives of the people making these arguments. I went to their Facebook page. I went to their Instagram page. I went and looked, and I know a lot of these people and all of these arguments. And I looked at their lives and they were also unhappy with the results in their life. They've also said to me in the last week or so, oh, I need to do something about my fitness or all oh, my spouse or all oh, my kids or all oh, my business isn't where I need it to be. I immediately withdrew from these fruitless conversations as soon as I made this observation. And I focused on my goals and trying to remember, is, it, is my goal to be engaged in these discussions or is my goals or are my goals something else? Well, as I was there skimming headlines, I noticed that all the headlines are geared to draw you into the lowest form of an argument. Nearly all of these headlines today want you to take a position as opposed to consider both sides. And as I saw this, I was empathetic for those who don't have a lot of bandwidth, who are skimming headlines, who are taking positions without critically thinking, without having the bandwidth to critically think. And then I saw the solution to the problem. I was trying to give language to myself about what is the right path, what is the right way to think about these things, and I was simply reminded of an age-old principle by a local businessman, Robbie Sampson, who made this post about his theme, and I am unabashedly stealing like an artist and extrapolating on this for my theme this year and how to beat every bad argument. Robbie Sampson was not engaged in nearly any of these dialogues. In fact, the thing he posted was this. My theme for this year is discipline. Now that sounds simple. That doesn't sound profound. It's not sexy. It doesn't sound like a life hack. I don't know what to do. But then the phrase hit my mind. Distance with discipline. You see, the tough thing is, is that we're engaged in these fruitless dialogues, whether it's politics or whether it's identity or whether it's the industry or the markets. It's reactive in nature. And we're engaged in that reactivity because that's the only place we have engaged ourselves. In fact, we're not far from those dialogues because we're admired in it. But I suddenly wanted to distance myself from these arguments. I wanted to make distance in my goals. I wanted to make distance in my fitness and health. I wanted to make more progress and distance in my relationships that I value. I wanted to make more distance and progress in my business. It's got to be doing better than what it's doing right now because for the effort we're giving it, and then in my spirituality, I wanna make more distance going deep into, inside myself. I wanted to make more distance. And the theme distance through discipline struck me that I can beat every bad argument by putting some distance between me and the argument. Not just ignoring it, but legitimately making progress in my goals. So here's a few quick thoughts I wanna leave with you. I want to encourage you for these four things, leave them with you on how to create distance with discipline. Number one, execute discipline. If you're not sure how to execute discipline, start with fitness. Everyone generally knows what to do. Grant, I don't have a gym membership. You have a floor, do push ups, do sit ups. You have a street 
go walk that street and put in a mile. Marissa walked this morning with our pup around the lake. She did discipline. Execute discipline. Grant, when do I stop? You don't. That's the point of discipline. Well, when's my rest day? If you're asking, you're asking too soon. You'll know when to take a rest day. For now, focus on the discipline. That is what having a disciplined mind does. It shoves out any rationalization to quit, stop, or give yourself a break and move forward. That is the point of discipline. If someone is being disciplined, you're like, hey, you got to go easy on yourself. You got to know when to take a break. You are literally interrupting their ability to cultivate discipline in their life. Stop it. Number one, execute discipline. How else can you execute discipline? If you see someone executing discipline, hype them. If you see someone executing discipline, encourage them. If you see someone executing discipline, tell them you wish you were doing what they were doing. Don't tear them down. Don't tell them to go easy on themselves. Do not tell them to take a break. You don't know what demons they've had to put down just to get out there and do it. You can participate in that. You can even borrow that vibe and borrow that energy by encouraging them. Anything else. There is no neutral. Well, I'm antagonistic to it. Are you? Take a hike. Well, I'm not antagonistic to it, but I'm not for it. I'm just neutral. If you are neutral on something in someone's life, you're antagonistic to it. Neutrality is ambiguous and ambiguous saps energy like the cold. Be hot for those in your life who are executing discipline, please. Number two, then take the lessons you have learned from discipline from the body and put it into your mind. As you execute discipline for your fitness, take, take all of those internal lessons like resilience, focus, stiff arming distractions, being curt, speaking your mind. Hey, are you, are you done with that set? I need to get in there. These things take a lot of discipline to speak up and do. Now execute that in your personal life. Ask your vendors, hey, when are you going to be done with that? And just let them answer. Ask your employees, hey, what's it going to take to hit that next level? Give me one more rep. In business, we've taken the opposite. Go easy on yourself. I know we said 10 reps, but eight's okay. Hey, I don't want you to be a taskmaster, but I do want you to raise the bar for your employees and your partners and your vendors. Hey, why don't you go the extra mile? Just curious. I didn't have time or money. Okay. So I just got to pay you more? Yeah. Okay. People will start to reveal whether or not they have discipline and resilience, not to extract more value out of them without paying for it, but to extract what their values are out of them to know if you want to partner with them. Hear me on that. Number three, make measured progress. Make distance. How do you distance yourself from beating bag arguments? Make progress in your goals. You'll look over your shoulder and realize there's no one near me. I've, I have left the pack behind because I got out of the argument. I focused actions that could actually make a difference. You could take actions on the things that they're still arguing about. If you, if you believe there's a book ban in Florida, you could either, you could get involved in the argument or you could get out of the argument and go take action with it. If you believe that the market is so bad that your business is going to tank or ChatGPT is so disruptive, it's going to disrupt your business, you could go on Reddit and argue about it. Or you could actually take action on your business and adopt that technology or so vision with your team. Make progress. So number one, execute discipline. I recommend fitness. Start with push-ups, start with sit-ups, start with eating in the kitchen. Execute discipline. Number two, parallel those lessons into your business, into your relationships, into your spirituality. Number three, make distance between you and the arguments. Make so much distance that you hear people arguing like, I don't even, I can't even engage in that. Why? Because I am making so much progress that if I stop to argue, I'll stop my progress. Number four, then once you have made distance and it is a comfortable distance, you can engage with the argument, but with a single question, how much progress has your arguing made? Beat every bad argument by A, creating distance, and then B, asking those participating, how much uh, progress has your arguing and debating made? You could be complaining, posting righteous indignation, arguing amongst themselves. And when they argue amongst themselves, they're actually doing a double injustice. They're not convincing anyone of their point, but they're also arguing with people who could be on their team for making progress. Getting involved in fruitless debates, posting memes that are inaccurate, you can engage with this discussions only after you've made progress. And the only way you are allowed to engage in Grant's book 
is to ask how much progress has your arguing made? Hmm. Who in this dialogue is actually making a difference and making progress? And then go engage with those people and say, hey, how can I help? Because you've made progress, chances are you have bandwidth. So number, the four things, number one, execute discipline and I recommend fitness number, and, and health and nutrition. Number two, parallel the lessons you're making into your small business, your relationships, and your spirituality. Number three, do not come up for air until you look over your shoulder and you have made massive distance between you and the arguments for crypto, against crypto, for political things and against political things, for ChatGPT and against ChatGPT. Do not come up for air until you have made so much progress in those areas yourself, actual measured results that when you come back, you can say, hey, how much? How much uh, progress have you made arguing about it? Meanwhile, here's the results I've gotten. I want to give you a quick example of this. My good friend, Jarrett, we were on FridayFinances.tv yesterday, uh, last Friday. And we, t we were discussing a friend of his who went driving Uber. His friend had been partying and partying and they were going out Friday, Saturday night and then doing brunch on Sunday. And, and his friend was like, I want to travel the world. So his friend just said, I'm checking out and started driving an Uber. And his friend driving an Uber uh, was listening to books and material while they were driving, while guests weren't in the car. They made a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't a lot. And a lot of people were like, dude, you're driving the Uber. You're only making a couple hundred bucks. They were like, yeah, no. Two years later, the person retired fully through geo arbitrage. Done. Now they might have different goals. They might re-engage the system. But for now, they were living in Latin America financially free. And they were mystified about this themselves. They don't even know how this happened. What's more, the partying friends were still partying. Now, I'm not against partying at all. I'm not against being out with your friends at all, but you do have to measure. Some people would say, you're driving an Uber, you're only making a couple hundred bucks. The person was like, yeah, but do tell me, what did you do? Well, I worked all week and you know, it, you, you know YOLO, you're only gonna live once. So, I mean, I only spent a couple hundred bucks. So here's this math. One person's, and if they had just stopped and sat at home on the couch, they would have saved a couple hundred bucks. But on top of that, they earned a couple hundred bucks. So where their friends had kind of gotten in the hole a couple hundred bucks, and that's okay, you're out there partying. It's normal to spend a couple hundred bucks on the weekend, a couple thousand bucks for some people. But this person had not only stopped doing that, they had also earned a couple hundred bucks. Now look at the distance. We only think about the earning or the spending, but we don't think about the gap. Now, you don't have to keep up with the Joneses, but don't be mystified when someone who has done that has made a double progress over you. They didn't just do an incremental progress, they did a double progress because they not only were not spending, they were also earning. That double progress needs to be accounted for and that's why some people are gonna make it through this recession. The double progress you can make is in your business. Everyone's clocking out at two and three just because I'm just done with it and I'm financially free and we can work remote and I, I work leveraged. Great, you, that's great, you use technology, you're less stressed out, that's perfect for you. But for me, I'm not too stressed, I'll just work a little more. And in that working a little more, it's not just I got two hours worth of work extra, this person also didn't make, my competitors also didn't make those two hours of progress. So not only did I get two hours ahead of myself, I got four hours ahead of them, five hours ahead of them. And day in and day out, year in and year out, when the recession hits, I don't even recognize the argument about the recession because I am in control of my agency and my earning capacity. That's what I mean when I talk about beating every bad argument and distance through discipline, distance from the norm, distance from mediocre, distance from the average, distance from my old self, distance from bad arguments, getting double the distance just by executing singular discipline. Double the distance by singular discipline. I hope for you and want to encourage you this morning, disengage in arguments, make discipline happen, transition that discipline to other areas of your life, make measured progress, and then look over your shoulder and encourage those still engaged in the argument, encourage them by asking them a question. How much progress have you made with all this arguing and debate? Then turn back around and go back to work at the thing you're trying to do in the world. Hey, listen, I encourage you this Monday, you're going to be extraordinary. You're going to overcome. You're gonna do great things. I hope you hear me on this and I hope you know that I mean that from my soul. Join us tomorrow for Not Crypto Bros, Tuesday afternoon at three. Friday, we'll release a new episode of Friday Finances. Get ahead there, but why are we talking about any of this?
because I want you to remember the mission. No matter what you do, remember the mission. Igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own. Have a great day.